All right, look it, we finally got it after all of this cutting and adjusting. I was able to get it in. We've got a few spots with some interference. We can see the frame here, here, and then where the steering column hits up there. What is up, fellas? Welcome back to the garage where today we are gonna be digging back into the 94 GMC OBS truck build. So just to review, if you guys haven't seen any of these videos, we've got all this stuff on with some previous videos, but what have we done so far? We have taken this single cab shore fed K1500, which is a four wheel drive or was, we're converting it to all wheel drive. So we, added a front Denali differential, made some custom mounts to make that work. We've converted the transfer case to an NV149, which is an all time, all mechanical transfer case that pulls a lot of the electronics out of it. We've converted the rear axle to a independent rear suspension with coilovers. We've converted the front suspension to some custom upper A-arms with some kryptonite ball joints and heim joints for adjustability where we can get camber and things like that. And we've put a big brake package on it from a modern full-size truck. And we've converted the uh, master power brakes to a manual brake setup. So, and it's an LS swap and it's a 4L80E, which is a four speed automatic electronically controlled transmission. So today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do something very unique. A lot of guys have kind of been talking about it. I put it out there. We're gonna try, I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot to convert, pull a modern muscle car, electronic power assist steering, rack and pinion, and get rid of all the old junk in here. The steering gear, the pitman arm, all the tie rods and ball joints, as well as the pump and all the accessory stuff on that engine that it's gonna reduce a lot of weight and give us electronic power steering. So let's dig into it. First things first, why would I want to pull a modern muscle car electric rack and put it in this truck? For, for starters, a rack and pinion is just a lot tighter, better steering setup in general. We're turning this thing into a street truck. So it's gonna get rid of a lot of the joints and connection points and not to mention weight and complexity of the steering gear is gonna get pulled out. The pitman arm, our idler arm here, our track bar, drag link, all this stuff that is tied into this front steering, we're gonna try to get rid of, and then we're gonna drop this front electronic power assist steering in the front end. Now, we can talk about where we're getting it. I like to take modern muscle car parts that are factory OEM and put them in old vehicles, old muscle trucks, old cars. Their factory OEM stuff is generally really well engineered and a lot cheaper than aftermarket. So everything I'm doing is on a budget, even though it can get a little pricey, I can get stuff very reasonable prices. If I just use a little bit of engineering, if you wanna call it that, and uh, make it work for this. So there's a couple factors we gotta consider on if we can even make this electric rack and pinion steering work. One is clearances and can we make it fit? The other is a a little bit of the steering geometry where we need to make sure it doesn't have a bunch of bump steer which we're going to talk about that too first things first is let me show you guys the rack we're going to be dealing with and i got it out of a junkyard um, we'll go over exactly what it is but we need to make sure this thing works first so 
Let's get into it. So here's the rack. It's a 2020 Mustang GT modern muscle car rack electronics called an EPAS. So electronic power assist rack. Electronic power assist steering is the EPAS. There's still mechanical connection points in the system with this steering column is gonna run into here, but then it's full electric at that point. So, I mean, there, there are full electronic steering systems. I believe like Tesla's are all just drive-by wire, which are like sensors and servos and things, sending communications, Bluetooth or wirelessly. That would scare me a little bit. I probably would not be doing that on the type of stuff I'm doing. This is does have mechanical connections, meaning if we have a failure with the electronics, I'm still going to have steering. So that gives us a little bit of peace of mind. So I'm not doing something really stupid, just, you know, maybe a little stupid. So lots of benefits to this, but we need to make sure this thing works. So I got this out of a junkyard uh, for super cheap, even getting them, even getting these units out of, you know, eBay or other classifieds or a pick apart, they're very economical, but I really want to give this a shot. It looks like size wise, we're going to make this fit and we can, we're going to get into that obviously. Sleep. At this point, I don't know if it's going to work. Hopefully by the end of the video, I've got this thing connected and we're going to answer that question. But for now, what we do need to do is make sure this thing even works. It's full electronic steering. So basically if I just, I need to get a battery 12 volt to this from B plus circuit, just straight to the battery. We'll run a circuit breaker in there or a fuse and then run a ground straight to the battery as well. And then we're going to supply a ignition 12 volt. So the wiring is really simple, but again, this is a little complex. For instance, I don't know if you guys can see the GT100 right here, the blue truck. This is a street truck we've been building and we're going to continue here shortly. We'll be doing some videos on this, but that is a 2016 Mustang GT performance pack with a 63 F100 unibody that's channeled and sectioned over the top of the entire chassis. So my point is, is this rack is the same rack that's in that truck. And there's adjustments that I can do actually in that truck that are functional where I can select normal driving mode, sport, comfort, and it basically, I'm guessing, adjusts the sensitivity of the steering or increases the ratio. So there's some belts and can modules and things that are in this that have to communicate to make that work. At this point, I'm not going to mess with any of that. I can get some can modules, I believe, and have them communicate and potentially adjust that stuff. Maybe in the future we'll do that, but from what I've read and what I understand with some wiring schematics, if I run this to the battery ground negative and then running a 12 volt accessory to it, it bypasses the can module and it'll just go back to like auto mode where whatever the default setting is, we're going to have steering. I just want to have the adjustability with the different mode, which for now is good. So we need to test that theory and see if that works. So I did get some factory connection. So just to explain those, what we were talking about with those connections, I did get some factory connections here, this large plug, just so we can actually plug them in. So I ran, I got some four gauge cable, we got our power, which is obviously the red and ground, which is the black, a big long cord. I didn't cut this cable down yet because I don't know exactly how I'm gonna mount it. And then I also got the other factory connection here, which goes here. And this is all, I blocked the pins out that we aren't gonna need. And then we run the 12 volt uh, accessory or keyed on circuit right here. So we've got factory plugs and that way everything is gonna be sealed and watertight and, and set up you know, professionally. So full disclosure, we got these factory plugs online and as you guys can see sometimes these factory plugs you know you got the little red this locks it down to remove this plug i'm pushing the red piece in and then i'm pushing this little black piece here down once the red piece is up and it lifts up these two little tabs full disclosure i bought this nice factory plug and then broke it while i was i was just fitting the connections because i forced it off and broke this little tab so i bought another one of these little plugs we're gonna wire it again here real quick there's a company out there. I have no affiliation with them. 
Um, but they do sell these factory plugs here and they're nice little kits. It's called Range Industries, so check them out. They do some cool different things for um, a lot of Mustang, different parts, modern muscle car stuff, but it gives us the connections, the actual factory connections here with all the inserts and everything. So I got another one of these little guys. We're gonna repin this wired into our, um, I believe this is probably a 16 gauge wire, maybe a 14, and then make these connections. We'll go pull a battery and see first of all does our rack work so let's uh let's get this pinned up and then give it a shot cross your fingers All right, boys, we have been chopping metal out of this bad boy like there's no tomorrow. So I'm super dirty, I'm a little wore out. We got everything cut out and it fits. So let's take a look here real quick. We did have to take quite a bit out of this driver's side frame. Not too worried about strength. The only thing that really mounts into this, there's a lot of steel built into this, but this lower front control arm mount is right here. Once we get, we need to get some four inch circular tube, reinforce that four inch little recess we made for our tie rods and then we're going to plate this whole thing and it's going to be super tight and plated and reinforced so that's going to add all of our structural rigidity back into the frame um, and it doesn't do a whole bunch other than for just that lower control arm mount is off the front here so that is good we know this thing fits though which was the what if we know we got it electrically powered up everything works we drilled a hole for the steering column to fit we'll have to make some custom stuff to get that going but this bad boy fits we're just gonna have to build a bracket now off these front bosses and i'm gonna make the bracket removable we're gonna try to have it bolt in and out for obvious reasons so we can get this thing out in and out for for maintenance but we do have some nice structural supports here where the idler arm was and then where the original steering gear was here so we'll build some plates and then maybe run some dom tubing to some other plates and get that in and out where we can remove it i think that's going to be it for this episode we got to get some more steel we got to get cleaned up i need to get cleaned up because i'm a mess but i'm super excited this is going to work it's going to be pretty sick and uh you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up below, let me know. But look at all this weight reduction. Oh, so much junk metal gets to go in the garbage. So that was a bit of a pain in the butt, but let's get everything cleaned up and uh, put our thinking caps on, see how we want to make this fit. But uh, that's going to be it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and God bless and long live hot rodding.